What's going on guys and welcome back to the one and only Bacon's Drinks channel here on YouTube. And today I have another interesting fall cocktail for you guys. It's called Floating Around in a Hot Air Balloon. Yes, it's quite the wordy title, but I assure you it has more than enough flavor to back it. And guys, I pulled today's recipe from one of my favorite books in my collection, and it just might be one of my favorite cocktail books, period. It's called Beautiful Booze. And this book was written by James Stevenson and Natalie Migliorini. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly, Natalie. If I didn't, I apologize. And guys, this book is an absolute hidden gem of the cocktail world. I'm actually surprised it doesn't have more recognition. I think it deserves to be up there with the greats. Each recipe seems to be unique and original. And honestly, this book has showed me techniques, garnishes, syrup recipes, and stuff that I've never seen before. It also has cocktails for every occasion. There's a section where it breaks it down by season. And also most of the chapters are divided up into like nightcap cocktails, summertime cocktails, tropical cocktails. I mean, it literally has cocktails for just about every occasion. And it also has it for every different experience level. Some cocktails in here are very easy and some are actually quite elevated. So whether you're a novice or a ex super experienced bartender, there's something for everyone in this book. All right, guys, with that being said, let's go ahead and get to making the cocktail. So we're gonna be building our cocktail in a shaker tin today. And first, we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of fresh squeezed lime juice. Perfect. All right, guys, and next, we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of chai tea syrup or spiced chai tea syrup. Don't worry, guys, I'll put the recipe in the description. It's actually super easy to make. But all right, guys, once again, we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of the syrup. All right, perfect. All right, guys, so we're on the home stretch and we finally get to our spirit base. Next, we're gonna be doing one ounce of Blanc Vermouth. I'm using Dolan Blanc Vermouth today. I love vermouth, sweet, dry, rouge, all of it. It's absolutely delicious. And for you guys that don't know what vermouth is or don't know what it tastes like, it's like a highly aromatized, fortified wine. It also has some herbaceous notes to it and it's absolutely delicious. And it's actually a popular ingredient in classic cocktails like the Martini and the Manhattan. Um, come to think of it, I actually haven't made any classic cocktails on this channel yet, which is pretty crazy. I think I need to do that, at least at some point. But uh, anyway, once again, we're gonna do one ounce of vermouth. All right, perfect. All right, guys, and last but not least, the spec calls for one and a half ounces of apple brandy. I'm using uh, Calvados or Calvados. I'm not exactly sure how you say that. If you guys know how to pronounce it, be sure to put it in the comments. But once again, we're gonna do one and a half ounces of this. Now, I'm gonna note one thing just real quick. Let's go ahead and get the pour. All right, perfect. So guys, on a quick note, I just wanted to mention that not all apple brandy is the same. There's a reason this recipe calls for Calvados and not Applejack. Even though they're both apple brandy, they actually taste very different. Laird Applejack has a full-bodied and robust flavor, uh, kind of reminiscent of a bourbon with subtle notes of apple. And while the Darren Calvados that we're using today has a lighter, a more dry taste, more reminiscent of actually a vermouth or a white wine. It's also worth mentioning the apple notes in the Calvados are more intense than the Laird Applejack brandy. So sorry for taking you guys on a side tangent there, but I did want to let you guys know that all apple brandy, once again, is not created the same, and you can substitute Applejack for this, but it will change the cocktail completely. All right, guys, so we're actually gonna be doing something a little different today. We're actually gonna shake with ice cubes in the tin, and then we're gonna strain it into a brandy snifter, and then add crushed ice after. So I'm gonna put about three to four ice cubes in the tin so we can get a nice shake. All right. All right, let's go ahead and put the seal in our tin. And we're gonna go ahead and give it a nice brisk shake, anywhere from five to 10 seconds. You don't wanna over dilute the cocktail because if you do, um, it will become too watery whenever you add the crushed ice. All right, that should be about good. All right guys, let's go ahead and get our brandy snifter ready. And like I said, we're going to strain right into the snifter glass. No need to double strain because we're gonna be adding crushed ice. So if there's a little bit of ice shards in there, it's not a big deal. All right, perfect. All right, guys, and next we're gonna fill up the glass with crushed or pebble ice. I'm using pebble ice from Sonic today, which you guys know is some of my favorite ice. But of course, regular crushed ice will work just fine. And make sure that you, if you get pebble ice from Sonic, just make sure that you freeze it or put it in the freezer before you actually use it because it has a tendency to melt on the drive home. And if it's even tempered just a little bit, it can make your cocktail super watery. 
All right, guys, and we're actually going to leave a little bit of a cap because we're actually going to be floating some bitters over the top of this drink today. All right, guys, but before we get that bitters float, we need to garnish the cocktail first, and we're actually going to be garnishing with a green apple fan uh, pinned to a lemon twist. So it's so funny. I actually didn't know about this cocktail until a couple of days ago while I was doing research for uh, this particular video. So I was trying to find some great uh, fall cocktail recipes for you guys. And the garnish just so happened to be a mixture of the garnishes that I did in my past two videos. Uh, the lemon twist is very um, close to the uh, orange twist that we did for the uh, Nui Nui video. And we did an apple fan in my last video on the spiced apple fix that we used a, a green apple fan, of course, there. So let's go ahead and put it down into the cocktail just like that. All right, guys, so we're not done yet. Let's go ahead and get to floating our bitters. All right, guys, so we're going to need to improvise a little bit today. This is actually a lot easier if you have a cocktail dropper or a Japanese bitter dasher. Um, unfortunately, I only have Angostura bitters in the actual bottle. And for you bartenders out there and anyone that's ever used one of these bottles, you know the dashes can be quite sloppy and unpredictable. And that's not a big deal when you're doing dashes straight into a glass or straight into a mixer tin. But when you're trying to um, be precise and float bitters over a cocktail, it's actually not ideal. So I'm going to break the fall of the bitters or break the momentum of the bitters uh, by trying to slowly drop them over the back of this bar spoon here. So I'm going to try to be as careful as I can going to be a little difficult, but once you get the bitter stream going, it actually happens quite quickly. We don't want to send the bitters with force into the cocktail because it'll make its way down the cocktail and you know put red streaks into the drink. And sometimes it's a little unavoidable. Like I said, if I had a cocktail dropper, this would be a cinch, but I don't, unfortunately. So. All right, guys, I think that's about as good as we're gonna get. I end up getting bitters. Looks like I got bitters on the bottom of the glass here. Let me clean that up. All right, guys, now that we're done with that, we got one last step here. We're gonna grate some fresh nutmeg right over the top of the cocktail. And you wanna just lightly dust it, be about anywhere from two to four grates right over the cocktail. Perfect. All right, and there it is, guys, floating around in a hot air balloon cocktail. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. All right, guys, I got my handy dandy bamboo straw here. I'm gonna put it down in there and let's go ahead and give it a taste. Oh man, that is good. Guys, so of course, when I go in to take a taste, I can smell the fresh grated nutmeg over the top. Um, it reminds me of fall. It just smells absolutely amazing. And guys, there's actually a lot going on in this cocktail. It's actually rather complex, but I will tell you, it didn't taste quite like I thought it would. This is actually kind of a wine forward cocktail. As you can imagine, a lot of that's coming from the vermouth. But I think a lot of that's also coming from the brandy. You would figure this would be a brandy forward cocktail, but that vermouth is coming in very strong. And next I'm getting that absolute delectable chai tea syrup. If you guys don't know what chai is, it's basically a massive amalgamation of baking spices, but the main notes are usually cinnamon, nutmeg, and cardamom. And I believe they also throw star anise in there. I mean, there's all sorts of different spices in chai and it really tastes like fall. And also guys, as you continue to sip the drink and the ice continues to melt, those bitters that were once floated on the top will slowly make their way down into the body of the drink, thus elevating the cocktail and adding a whole new dimension of flavor. And overall, I would say this is a very easy sipper, a very light and dry cocktail with notes of apple and baking spices. All right, guys, well, that's it for today's video. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you want to see more of my content in the future, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you could, please leave me a comment. That really helps get the algorithm going. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in to last video, my Spiced Apple Fix. Uh, video already has over 1,000 views, which is absolutely phenomenal. I don't think any of my videos has ever gotten 1,000 views in two days. But remember the goal. Our goal is to get to over 1,000 subs by the end of the year. Let's make it happen, guys. Once again, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It's completely free to do so. And every time you do it, it helps me out tremendously. Now, with that being said, guys, as always, thank you so much for the support. Y'all have a great and safe weekend, and I will see you guys next time.